Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do, now that, just to recap, now that we have calculated the inverse of J3 that we're going to slap our wrist back onto, now I need to calculate um, the rotation, the current overall rotation of the wrist. It's referred to as the spherical wrist. It's using three joints together as a spherical wrist and it's considered to have a, a center being the, the center point of, of, of where we're going to. Um, but um, so there's two things that we need to get um, to calculate that rotation frame of our wrist. The first thing that we need is we need to know after we've run the forward kinematics we need to know where our current rotation is. So we take that current rotation and we're going to bring it across to this side to our inverse kinematics and you can see it's just directly transferred if I click on each of these boxes here you can see I'm just copying them in so like I said earlier we run the forward kinematics first and that gives us some of the you know we need to know current positions of where the robots at before we um, start tweaking them and telling them you know where we want to go from there which brings me to the next point is that I know where my current rotation is but I need to factor in what I want to change it to, which is these three boxes, the change in the yaw, the change in the pitch, or the change in the roll. So if I, you know, add a value here of five, you know, you can see my joints change to reflect that. So you can see if I go to zero, I go back to, to the previous values or put in a five, you can see what what joint changes would happen to achieve that change of five degrees in the in the pitch. Um, so to apply these changes, uh, the change in this box, the change in this box, and the change in this box, we have to do something similar. We have to do the exact same thing we did in the very first example when I first introduced you to a rotation matrix. I have to come back to that original first slide that we looked at, this guy, and I have to apply the X, the Y, and the Z and create three different um, rotation matrices um, which are right here. We start out with a Z in this case. We start out with a change in Z, then the change in Y, and then the change in X. So I take this formula and you can see I've got 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then these four values, this one right here would be the cosine times uh, the rotation of X this one would be the negative sine of x, this one is the sine of x, this one is the cosine of x, and I go down here to y change, um, same thing, this formula here, we go 0, 1, 0, 0 on each side, and the cosine of y, the negative sine of y, the sine of y, and the cosine of y, and then we go down to the change of, of x, and I apologize earlier I was pointing to x, I should have been pointing to z, um, this is y, and then this one here, um, is the change in X. So um, right here, this one is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, this one here is the, the uh, cosine of X. This one is the sine of X. And this one's the negative sine of X. And this one is the cosine of X. So I made a little mistake earlier when I was talking to the change in Z. I should have been pointing down to this one. This one should be, that one right there should be the cosine of uh, of z. This one is the sine of z, negative sine of z, cosine of z. So I have a rotation matrix that has the rotation for z for what I want to change it to. I have a rotation matrix for what I want to change y to and um, I have a, uh, a rotation matrix for the change in x. And again just to make sure that you you see the correlation when I double click on that that's coming up to this value, the change in the z that I, that I want or any of the values in this one. If I double click on that you can see it's grabbing the, the change in the pitch. Um, so it's taking those values that I want to change it to and then um, I have to multiply each of these matrices together to come up with a, a whole rotation matrix that shows the total um, change of the X, Y, and Z. So over here you can see I've uh, uh, in this matrix you can see first row times first column, first row times second column, and so on. Our typical math to multiply this rotation matrix times this rotation matrix gives me this. 
and then my final one which is this guy where I multiply the product of those two times the x. So again you can see first row times second column, first row times third column, do the middle one, you can see middle row times middle column, uh, and so on. So now this matrix defines my total desired change from here. Okay, so now I have that right there, um, and then what I need to do next is multiply this rotation matrix um, by, um, let's see, yeah, I need to multiply, basically this rotation matrix is the product of our current position times our desired change. So our current position, um, you know, might be in one position and I want it to change by whatever I've put in. So I multiply this one times this one and I end up with my um, desired change. So this right here, this ends up being my overall rotation of the wrist of where I want it to be. So when I double click on that, I'm first row times first column you know, uh, first row times second column, you know, same stuff, bottom row times middle column. So this rotation matrix is basically the end result of where I want the robot wrist to be. But now, if you remember back to our uh, example, now I need to slap it back on the end of the robot. Now that I've done all the math to calculate where this should be, um, now I need to reconnect it. Um, so that's where we do that. So we take um, this one and we multiply, we scroll over here, we're going to multiply our inverse of 3 times our desired rotation of our wrist and this couples the robot back together. This sticks the wrist back onto the inverse of J3. Um, so you can see that math being done there, um, you know, first row, third column. You know, same thing, just multiplying these two matrices together. Again, the inverse of J3 times the total rotation of the wrist gives us this, and this is known as R36, the rotation matrix from joint 3 to joint 6. Um, so this is really it. This was the hard part to get to, um, but now we've got to it, and now we get to run some math against this to extract the J uh, 4, 5, and 6 values. So that formula is here. Now uh, keep in mind that I cheated. Um, there's another formula if J 5 is at 0, but I basically in the Python program I forced J 5 to never be 0. So th there is more to this, but it, it basically you know to get the understanding of it um, this formula you have to calculate J5 first so you take the value in 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 box uh, in row 3 column 3 you take um, that value and then you uh, of the ATAN2 function so the ATAN2 function takes two values um, the first value is the box from R33 and then the second value you take either the positive or the negative of um, one, I think, yeah, one minus uh, the value in 33 squared, uh, the square root of that. Um, so you put both of those values in here, um, and then that will give you the value for joint five. So if we look over here, um, here's those two values. If we if we look at this one, um, I have the formula a tan two, that value, the negative square root, or in this one the positive square root. So right here where it says positive or negative, um, the, there's no way that I know of to take this rotation matrix and figure out which way J5 goes. Um, it, it's unfortunately, I don't know how to solve that one yet. Um, so I, I may have cheated or maybe I did it the right way, I'm not sure. But this formula here, um, you're either going to have to choose negative or positive. Now, if you choose positive, if J5 is positive, then joint 4 is calculated with this formula and joint 6 is calculated with this formula. If 
joint 5 is negative, then use this formula or this formula. So in this case, um, the ATAN2 function with R13, R23, and for joint 6, the ATAN2 function with the value from uh, R31, R32. Or if it's negative, then it's this formula and this formula. So again, you can see those here, just to reiterate, this is, um, this is joint negative, this is joint positive, this is um, joint four uh, in this condition, this is joint four in this condition if it's negative, um, this one again if positive, and this one if negative. Um, and so if I, I just want to show you how this, uh, so I double click on that and you can see that it's coming down and grabbing those boxes out of this final yellow, you know, out of our R36. And same here, you know, it's grabbing the same values. It's just applying, you know, a different operator against them. So basically, at that point, what I can, how I can describe this to you, is that we don't know if joint five is positive or negative. But if joint five is a positive 23, then four is going to be 41, and six is going to be 69. But if J5 is negative 23 then J4 has to be negative 138 degrees and J6 has to be 110 degrees. So I either get to choose these or I get to choose these um, and then put them here. You can see in this case these ones were put here. Um, so what we did, let's get out of there. So basically what I did, uh, I basically just come over here and look and see what the value of J5 currently is and that's why um, if you try and jog the robot through singularity, um, it's not going to work because you're going to end up on the opposite side of this. Um, so basically I just cheat. I go over and look and see what J5 currently is, and then I choose which one I have to choose, either this one or this one, based on the fact that our formula states that if, if the value is positive, I go here. If the value is negative, I go here. So I hope that makes sense there. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I think if I'm missing anything. So we used geometric means to get uh, 1, 2, and 3. Um, then we took the inverse of the uh, J3 frame. And then, so we take the inverse of J3 and we multiply it times you know current rotation times desired rotation put those together we got the inverse of where we want J3 to be and then from that um, we were able to use this formula here to come up with what the, the J4, J5, and J6 angles should be so now when we use our um, you know when we use our program here um, you know we can we can uh, you know, put in our put in our joint values here um, get our XYZ outputs there put in whatever changes we want there and see what the joint outputs should be to achieve that and then we can hit the test button to uh, to check it and it'll come over here and look at the previous and the new so I think that's it I hope everybody's as thoroughly confused as I am um, if you have any questions uh, just shoot me an email but I, I hope this helps everybody a little bit um, it certainly was a daunting task for me to try and figure this out from what was out on the internet, but I think I got most of it figured out. If you see any mistakes uh, that I've made, by all means, please point them out, because I'd like to correct them. Um, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just trying to show people what I struggled with. All right. Thanks for watching.